We're very fortunate to have Neil Kenny Guy with us from Mercy Corps. Neil, can you talk with us about Mercy Corps itself? Yeah, I'd be happy to. First of all, great to be here. Thank you. Great to be at Global Washington. This is an important event. Um, so let me, I would just say, the biggest thing about Mercy Corps right now is never in our 30, almost 40 year history have we been more stretched, more challenged, and I would argue even perhaps more relevant to the challenges we face today than now. And I say that because we're living in a world in which there's an increase in fragility, an increase in conflict and violence. Remember, it was only a few years ago when we were all talking about the better angels of our nature, when we were celebrating the end of history, in which there was concrete evidence that the world is getting better. I think arguably we're seeing a reversal in some of those gains right now. And we're certainly feeling the being stretched because of that. Is it military conflicts? Is it the Middle East? Is it economy? What is it? I think it's all of I think it's all of the above. But I think for us, more pertinently, it really is an increase in the number of fragile states. That is those places where poor governance, conflict, and extreme poverty collide. They're on the rise. You just look at we're facing 20 million people at risk of famine in Yemen and Somalia and South Sudan and Northeast Nigeria. That's all because of conflict. Conflict's number one driver. The World Bank now says, and they're right, is that conflict is the number one driver of extreme poverty today. So I know in our community we talk so much about the sustainable development goals, and I think they're wonderful. But if we don't make progress on sustainable development goals 16, and that has to do with reducing violence and strengthening good governance and justice systems, we won't fulfill the promise of all the other goals. I do a lot of work in Africa myself, and I'm, I'm just talking Africa right now. I go to government after government after government, and the corruption levels are really high. Is that a, the biggest challenge in uh, strong governments? Well, corruption is certainly a big, a big, big factor. You know, I think it was indicative what Mo Ibrahim, the famous African businessman, you know, who, who started a big cellular company and then created a foundation to a, make a significant grant, I believe it's five million dollars, to the African leader who will step down and peacefully pass on power to the next generation. Well, there have been a number of years in which he's not been able to make that that award. And we're seeing that more more today. You look at the changes now in Zimbabwe, we're all hopeful. But if that government doesn't become less corrupt and more transparent and more inclusive, um, then it's not likely to see the changes. And we can certainly go around and say the same things. The other factor, though, is, is I do think we're living one of these great inflection points in history. And I don't want to get too philosophical here. But, you know, by and large, not exclusive, but by and large, the locus of political and economic power has been in the West over the last 250, 300 years. That's shif shifting. We're in a multipolar world today. But the global institutions that were set up post-World War II, at, at best, are no longer fit for purpose. But we don't have alternatives in mind for this new world. And that in itself is unleashing sort of instability and fragility, never mind climate. Yeah. You, you come right down to the, what the focus of this conference then is about, and it's about leadership. Is Mercy Corps itself providing leadership through its disaster relief? if you will. You, you know, I, I think where we're providing more, li I'm proud of our disaster relief work. Mm -hmm. I'm amazing. proud that we had teams in Aleppo that were on the last bus out and stood there with the people at great risk to their own, you know, their own safety and security. But I have to say I'm equally proud of our focus on addressing some of the root causes. Almost everywhere, at least where we work, there are underlying grievances, often deeply historical 
and then exploited by modern day politicians too, too often. And so we have got work at a community level and trying to reach up from communities to a regional government level to a national government level that are saying, how can we reduce violence? How can we ensure that, her that herders and farmers can see a common future together? Because if you can't, you're going to continue to see Darfur's of the world. Do we have the leaders out there to be able to, to make this happen? You, you know, the, the leaders who are out there are probably the, not the ones in the headlines today. But yes, we see leaders all the time in villages where we work. You know, they're, and they're the change agents, right? Yeah. People often look to the work of Mercy Corps, and again, I'm proud of that work. But it is really our ability to work with, identify those local leaders, work with them, and enable them to carry out a vision for a more secure, more prosperous, more just community. That's the work that matters. I could ask you questions for hours, but I'm not going to do that to you. But I am going to ask this. What's been your proudest moment since you have started Mercy Corps? Well, boy, that's... That, that's Easy a, question. You know, huh? it is. It is. <laughs> but I will, say, I will say this. I think the... Uh, in terms of leadership, what's critically important is culture. And being able to build a kind of organizational culture that brings out the best in us. It's the place we come to do our most purposeful and meaningful work. And it incorporates some aspects of servant leadership so you recognize your success ultimately is the impact in the world, not the impact on your organization. And to the degree that we have built a culture that is close to that, it's always an aspiration, but it's close to that, and I'm very, very proud and humbled. How can people help? You know, I, here's what I say, particularly this time of year as we're coming to the end of the year. Um, I think it's so critically important. We live in a seamless web of compassion that connects a homeless child in this country with a hurting, hungry child somewhere else. So if you want to make pick one great local organization in your own backyard, get involved. Pick one great international organization and get involved. And if that's Mercy Corps, we thank you for your support. <laughs> Neil, thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Rainmaker believes we can change.